Hello there, Scorpios. I hope this reading finds you well, and I hope that it is helpful for you. So, um, when I was shuffling out the spread for you, um, what I saw was an image in a kitchen. Okay, it's like um, very nineteen, like seventies, nineteen eighties type of a kitchen. Uh, the, the decor, the wallpaper, and things like that is very reminiscent of like the, the 80s in particular. And I see this little boy, he looks like he's about maybe like 8 or 9, like under the age of 10, okay? But he's, um, he's a, a, a kid, he's got dark skin, he has uh, black hair, and he has like an afro to his hair. So he's sitting in the corner uh, on the dining room, or I'm sorry, it's a dining room bench. It's um, it's like a square bench. It's against the wall, and he's got his knees to his chest. And uh, what I'm seeing is uh, he's he's he might have scraped his knees. So there's like a big old band aid on his left knee, okay, and he's like picking at the perimeter, like the out outside layer of the band aid where the the sticky part is and he's deliberating whether or not to remove it okay now the band-aid looks a little old like it's been there for a few days you know um and he's he's got like a bunch of thoughts racing through his head like um what if it hurts if i remove it what if it peels off the scab and it starts bleeding again what if it's infected what ifs and what ifs and so instead of just removing it he's kind of like just picking at it working up the courage to you know he, he's I feel like he's trying to um, remove as much of that sticky part as he can and he's a little bit scared so it, it looks like it, it might have been a deep wound and it looks like it's a big band-aid so I feel like you know it, it might have been serious and especially for this boy it, he, he's he's small and he's young so it, it looks like a significant wound and I'm hearing the voices of the adults that are circulating around this um, kitchen area and they're kind of like telling him you know just remove it it'll be fine just remove it and wash it and he's uh, and they they tell him like if you don't want to do it i can do it for you and he just adamantly says no 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 don't touch me i want to do it and then he's biding his time he's trying to you know figure out what to do and so it the, the scene plays like that for quite some time like he's still sitting there deliberating and finally, he works up the courage, and some I hear somebody like his mom in the background. She's all like, you know, do it fast, like just just rip off the band aid. And so he pries op like pries open the sticky part on both sides of the band aid, and then he rips it off. And as soon as it comes off, he looks at it, and he's very surprised that first of all, it's not infected. It didn't uh, pull off any skin, and it's not bleeding, and um, it looked like it healed. Okay, it looked like he's in good shape. It, it looks like he's no longer hurting, and so he looks at it, and I see this broad smile spreading across his face, and the scene cuts out. So, let's talk about you know this this scene in in general. So I feel like you know that little kid is definitely you guys. Um, I feel like you've been mulling over a situation for a very long time and you're mulling over, thinking it over and you know there are a lot of what ifs and a lot of like um, uncertainty coming, running through your head. You know, what if it turns out this way? What if like I plan this but then it doesn't get executed and then things go awry? And I feel like in your head, with all of your thoughts, things are a lot worse than they seem. Either that or you're focusing a lot more on the negatives, okay? What if it hurts? What if it's infected? What ifs and what ifs? And the bottom line is we won't know how something is going to pan out unless we kind of like, you know, rip off that band-aid, unless we um, make a change or unless we purposefully do something okay so that's the first thing and then i'm also seeing as well this energy where uh the idea about you know making a decision and being very very deliberate about making this decision so don't sit with it anymore don't just poke at it don't just you know try to pry it um 
open from the periphery you kind of need to get in like dive right in and, and figure things out and sort things out so what i'm seeing here is things are not as bad as they seem and for some reason for many of you you know being the practical sign that you are uh, you tend to dwell on, you know, what if things don't go awry? Do I need a plan? Uh, what if things go awry? What if things don't go the way I plan? What if things don't come to fruition? Do I need a plan B? Do I need a plan C? And so while you're sitting with these thoughts, I feel like nothing, like no real action is, is taken in the real world, okay, in the physical. And so this is the month where you really have to think about what is that decision that you've been mulling over for a very long time and yet you're not really acting on it okay so for some of you what i have here ace of wands this is a project this is a work situation okay um and look at this match it feels like it has dimmed okay it feels like there's no spark left it just feels to me like it, it has smoked out or the um, the flames has been doused out, okay? So I feel like in this situation, you're no longer passionate about the work. You're no longer feeling emotionally fulfilled with the work that you are doing. And I feel that you are going through the motions. You are going through like uh, doing things that are expected of you. And especially, you know, uh, there's a little, this is a pangolin I, I believe and there's a little baby one right here so this is kind of like obligation okay doing things to pay the bills doing things out of that sense of personal responsibility doing things so that you know because our family depends on us because um, our children depends on us because that it, it's stable and it's it's pragmatic because it's the safer choice okay status quo this is very very status quo oriented and so I feel like for many of you you're in a job and you have been feeling that this situation has been lackluster for a very long time and you have been thinking heavily about you know a transition the death card underneath and I keep seeing this bird here and what it denotes is like there has been messages there has been signs poster boards just plaster all along the corridors of your life telling you you know Change is coming, change is imminent, change is required, change is needed. You're no longer feeling emotionally invested in this. It is time for you to do something else. It is time for you to venture off into the new. It is time for you, especially, to close out the cycle. The world is about, you know, things coming to an end, okay? Wrapping things up, jumping into a new phase in your life. But in this uh, context, it's almost like the world is yours for the taking. There will be so many other opportunities out there. It's almost like there's plenty of fish in the sea. There are plenty of other jobs that you could be doing. There are plenty of projects that are out there. There are endless and limitless possibilities out there. If you can leave this behind and invest your energy into looking forward and moving on with new opportunities, okay? so. The way that this reading is um, coming out to me, it feels to me like it's split like this. This is where you were or where some of you might be because, you know, Scorpios, you have a tendency to cling on to the past, okay? This is, um, for some of you, you're already here. For others, you're still here. And this is where the universe wants you to end up. And this is ultimately where you want to see yourself within you know the, the next five years okay or even like making a major transition even this month or even this year so that you can end up in this really amazing happy place at the end of the year or by the end of the year and we have here five of cups okay this is regret sadness fish out of water okay um, this is a situation that that feels to me to be very 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 incomplete uninspiring devoid of emotions okay so this is a creature that is half fish half human and it's basically a mermaid but it's not like the stereotypical depiction of a mermaid and in this environment it just seems to me like there's no water okay it's like a drought and it feels like this creature doesn't feel like they fit in anywhere do I belong on land and walk like a human or do I belong in the sea 
Where do I thrive? How do I find others that are like me? How do I put my skills to good use? How can I get myself out of this situation that is no longer bringing me emotional happiness? How do I, you know, try to move on with my life? And I feel for many of you, this is work oriented. For many of you as well, this could be a situation where, where you are living, who you are associating and aligning yourself with. And I feel like this, you know, um, this odd, oddball, like not feeling like you fit in, not feeling like you have found your niche, not feeling like you have found your path, and and feeling almost like I'm settling for this because it pays the bills, it takes care of the kids, it brings home enough money where I can, you know, put the kids through school, and and you know, save up for a house and and things like that. It's it's a very practical minded decision. That's uh, or even like the, the the lure for you to stay here is very practical. It's very pragmatic. But I feel that in your hearts of hearts is really not emotionally fulfilling for you, and you have been made aware of this for quite some time. Okay, you might have been wallowing in this for like the past year, the past 12 months and thinking that there needs to be something more. And what's really interesting um, in this cluster of cards is I keep seeing this communication coming from the bird. Okay, this is like your um, your spirit guides. Okay, that, that nudging, that kind of like itch in the back of your mind that you can't scratch telling you that Scorpio, you know this is not working. You know that there is more to this. You know that you're meant for more. You know that you're being pushed out of, out of your comfort zone. You're being pushed away from this situation that is snuffed out. The passion is gone. The thrill is gone. The, the embers, the flame, the flame is no longer here. And I'm, I'm also seeing like uh, the, the drive, the ambition, the passion. It's, it's devoid of all of those things. And so you're just clinging on to this uh, wand and it doesn't have any fire in it left, okay? So there's definitely uh, nudges, intuitive hits, as well as your own sense of intuition guiding you and giving you messages and telling you that you need to do something else here, okay? And going back to the image of the little boy, okay? Um, deliberating, okay, not making a move, uh, very fearful as well, and um, also in a state where he is mired in like fear, okay. So we have here the Three of Cups. This is a situation where things are going around and around and around in circle. This is like the uh, spin cycle, okay. The spin cycle where things come out in the wash, where we are getting rid of all the gunk, all the debris, all the dust, all the things that um, can can kind of like um, stain, tarnish, or even uh, make a situation dirty, okay? So what I'm feeling with this card is you can either, you know, dwell in this environment where things are just going around and around in a circle and there isn't anything new, or you can choose to you know, finish it up, finish it up, wrap it up, uh, tear off that band-aid. And I feel more than anything with this water energy, three of cups, it's your element, which means the executive decision, you know, the, the, the swiftness, the deliberateness has to come from you, okay? No one else can make this change for you. And people can tell you and people can talk to you and try to convince you and persuade you until they're blue in the face. But ultimately, you are your own person. And as a fixed sign, you are also very incredibly stubborn. And as a result of that, you have to arrive at wanting to make this change and wanting to make this decision on your own. And no one is going to be able to uh, get you to do it unless it's coming from you, okay? So like the weight of the responsibility, I feel, is really bearing down on you, okay? We have here the Ten of Pentacles. And the Ten of Pentacles is pretty much the apex of the financial responsibility, okay? And I'm feeling just the sheer gravity, the, the sheer weight of it, 
um, on this card, okay? For many of you, this is just like all the things that you have to get in order, okay? Get all your ducks in a row. Get your financial situation sorted out so that you can implement this change, okay? And for some of you, selling a car, uh, trying to, you know, move all of your stuff, trying to pack up boxes, trying to figure out what I need to leave behind and what I need to bring with me to the next phase of my life. Selling property, thinking about property, thinking about taking out a huge loan in order to fund some type of like um, startup project. Um, even getting like startup capital so that you can start a business and I'm seeing like the financial weight of, of it and the ramification is really um, bearing down on you and it can feel a little bit heavy, okay? Um, going back to what I mentioned for the reading for last month and I remember this very vividly because the energy feels very similar. I mentioned um, there's a lot of fear here about having to rely on another person in your um, February reading, I believe, right? And I mentioned that, you know, Scorpios, you guys rule the eighth house, okay? And the eighth house, once again, like I said, it's that bucket of tar. It's the house of uh, rebirth, sex, death, rebirth, and regeneration. It's about reinventing ourselves, okay? But the eighth house is also about share finances, share resources. And I feel like for many of you, you have worked really, really hard to be self-sufficient, to be financially stable, to take care of yourself, to not have to fall on hard times, to not have to, um, you know, to, to like build up a comfortable life for yourself where you can, especially if you have children, if you have people that you love, you want to be able to provide and, and buy nice things for the people that you love, okay? And so... The, the finances, it, it's not just about you, it's not just about taking care of you, buying yourself nice things, you think about other people. So with that 8th house ruling joint finances, a lot of it is just, you know, the, the weight of the responsibility, wanting to be self-sufficient, wanting to, to carry this financial burden, but at the same time, you just feel like, I don't know how I can possibly do this on my own. I don't know how I can start a business without having to, you know, go to the bank and, and get a loan. I don't know how I can, you know, start school without dabbing into or, or dipping into my savings. I don't know how I can, you know, leave this job right now and survive off and retire and survive off, you know, whatever income I've accumulated or, or dipping into my savings to fund the retirement. So I feel like there are a lot of financial decision, um, a lot of financial maneuvering or a lot of financial factors that, that are really affecting this major decision. And so you're kind of going round and round in circles trying to sort things out. And I feel like that little boy, you know, you are a little bit like, um, I, I want to say mired in the unknown, okay? And any time, and you know, any responsible person, when we are faced with a lot of risk, and when we are faced with a lot of uncertainty too, we tend to think about, you know, worst case scenario. Like, what if um, I, I'm anticipating this, but then I haven't really thought about that? And what if the situation goes haywire? what if what I'm leaning on, you know, is not stable, okay? And what if it's not full? What if it's not secure? What if it's faulty? What if it will fly off its hinges? What if, what if, you know, things change? So there are a lot of what ifs in this scenario that's disallowing you from making a move, okay? So I feel like for many of you, you're still here contemplating, mulling over all the decisions. And a lot of it, I feel, is financially um, is financially motivated. And I feel like finances might be the biggest factor here, okay? Um, for some of you, I feel like you have some brand new projects that you're trying to start up and people are bringing these projects to you like this messenger here in the bird is bringing you new projects here and you're working out the details, you're working out the numbers, you're crunching numbers trying to figure out 
pricing, trying to figure out estimates, trying to figure out like length of time, trying to plan a lot of things like when is a good time to start, when is a good time to end, when is a good time to wrap it up. Realistically, how long is it going to take me? Do I have the manpower? So you have a lot of logistical things that you're thinking about behind the scenes, and you're organizing and compartmentalizing. And you're trying to work out the details, and I feel like you're just like scraping the 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 tip of the iceberg, and you're scraping the perimeter of this bandaid. And I feel like it 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 seems very overwhelming because you feel like you might not know what's really underneath. Okay, and so what I would suggest here, and you know, you are the one that has to be deliberate about making this decision. It needs to come from you. It should be deliberately done. So take the time that you need until you are sure, because I feel like in the month of、uh, March, you are going to be very, very sure. You're going to take the situation into your own hands, and you're going to grab life by the the horns, okay? And you're just going to whatever it is that has been kind of like hidden from you, or whatever you feel like you don't have full information on or full access to, you're gonna rip off that bandaid, and you're gonna be the one in the driver's seat again. Okay. So, a lot of you might be here, and this is where you want to be. Okay, and the state where you want to be, it's really, really good. I have here the Four of Wands, and the Four of Wands is a major, major celebration.、Um, this is traditionally like a、um, a happy home, happy family, celebratory, coming together, communion, people gathering, and being in the shelter and the comfort and the stability of a, a long-term relationship. And then we have here the Two of Cups, which is a very strong soulmate connection. Okay, so I feel like for many of you, you're really、um, trying to trying to design or create your life so that you can fit into the life of another person, or so that you can make the other person fit into your life. Okay, and、um, This is about partnership. Okay, the Two of Cups is a really beautiful card that denotes to me、uh, having a really strong sense, like a bond, but a strong sense of like liking somebody, caring about somebody, wanting to grow old with another person. It's a very strong soulmate connection. Where even if we're mad at the other person, even if like they do the little things, you know, that drives us nuts, like chewing with their mouth open. Or giving unsolicited advice, or even if we don't see eye to eye on a lot of things, you still really care about this person, and they care about you. It's like when you're sick, they're there by your side, and when they're sick, you want to be there by by their side. And so this is a really harmonious type of a relationship, and you're trying really hard to work at it. Okay, and you see the ver- value and the merit in this situation. I feel like for some of you too, you might be in one relationship. The passion, the chemistry might have fizzled out. You're staying together for the financial stability here with the Ten of Wands. I'm sorry, the Ten of Pentacles, and you might have somebody else in your environment that is really pulling you, and 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 they they have like um. They have a hold on you, and you're trying to, you know, remove yourself from this situation so that you can start again. Okay, and you are well aware that this current relationship might not be serving you, and you're moving on with something else. Okay, and this is where you want to be ultimately. For others of you, this is just getting your life together in some capacity, so that another person, so so that you can like. Blend your life with another person, or you can ha- make room for the other person, or the other person can make room for you in their life. So I'm seeing a lot of like planning, a lot of、um, a lot of unknowns, a lot of factors that might not be、um, readily available. Like all the information is not readily available to you. I don't feel like anybody's hiding the information. I feel like everything is within your hands. You have total control over it. It's just whether or not you are ready to take this plunge, and you know the this the the decision. Excuse me, has to come from you. You need to be the one to make this decision because, like that little boy said, you know, I want to do it. 
okay and i feel like for many of you this is like a big yes okay if it's like confirmation that you need the answer is it's a big yes okay and you have to be the one to initiate that change or to initiate that that process okay uh, get the ball rolling uh from your end all right we have as well the four of pentacles and the star and the star is wish fulfillment okay this is like for many of you if you have been um like trying if you have been thinking about a new endeavor a new project a new business a new course of action that you need to take to steer your life away um from what was no longer serving you into something that has a lot more that makes you a lot more happy this is a big yes card okay and the star is all about your path it's all about your destiny it's all about things that you're meant to do because you naturally have the gifts and the talents in order to make this a viable um to to build this up so that it's a viable a uh, path for your future. The only thing that is standing in your way here is four of pentacles clinging on to the past, okay? And honest to God, Scorpios, you can be a little bit clingy and you can be a little bit and you know, uh fix signs in general. We like to control, okay? We like to predict outcomes. We like to 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 be in control at all times. We don't like the unknowns. We don't like the uncertainty. And I feel like the the thing that's really getting in the way here is I'm comfortable here, okay? There's riches, there's wealth, there's jewelry, there's gold chains. This is a very comfortable um abundant type of an environment, okay? And I feel like for many of you, it's comfortable here. Okay? It it's stable here. And so for you to break away from this you need like a grand gesture you need a, a promise of something extraordinary and something amazing and something huge in order for you to break away okay like i said the 10 of pentacles is the apex of financial stability and financial abundance and so to walk away from this you need a promise a guarantee of something much more amazing, much more passionate, much more thrilling in order for you to feel safe and secure enough to take this leap. And I feel like the universe is telling you there is something here. There is harmony. There is, you know, um another like a, there is a person that is going to be walking alongside you. And so I feel like you need it some reassurance. Okay, and you need it to to know the answers. Okay, so it, it's it's like that boy. I'm drawn to the fact that he he keeps thinking like, what if it's infected? Okay, because he's had that band aid on for so long. He doesn't know what's underneath. It's uh, sealed. It's stuck to his skin all around the perimeter of that wound. He doesn't know if it's infected. He doesn't know if anything got in. And so one of his worst fear it's not so much the pain but like what if he rips it open and then it's infected right and and to find out that uh that it's not healed but it it's like something that it, it's like the worst case scenario what if it's defective what if it's damaged goods what if you know um it's outside of my control Okay, what if I lose control in this situation? So I feel like for for many of you, the major obstacle between making this decision, you making this decision is definitely that sense of unknown, that sense of what if things go awry? What if things didn't pan out? What if, you know, I'm stuck in this situation where I'm going to get hurt, more hurt. And so there's a lot riding here but I definitely feel that the majority of it is this financial weight that is I'm feeling it really really heavily on your heart chakra. It's something you're very concerned about and it's smack dab in the middle of this spread weighing very heavily on you. You want this newness. You definitely do. You are realizing that status quo, whatever is holding you back here, is no longer feeding into your spark for life. You know your 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 uh, ability to really uh, wake up every day and be really 
happy and joyful. There's something heavy over here that's no longer feeding your emotional needs. You want this new celebration and you want this new change. And yet it just feels as if finances might be the major factor here. And at the end of the day, you want stability. You've worked really, really hard to build up this apex. And once you've reached this apex, it's comfortable, it's solid, and it's practical, and it's predictable, but it's no longer bringing you that emotional stability. Uh, I'm sorry, emotional happiness. And so this is, once again, a decision that you need to make on your own. And I feel like, you know, people can tell you, give you advice until they're blue in the face. And um, I feel like you're not going to do it unless you're ready for it, okay? And I can assure you, once you make this leap, what's on this side, where you want to head and where you want to be, it is very promising. It's full of prosperity. It's full of yes. And it's full of... Um, hopefulness i do feel there is a revival here and i do feel for many of you a stability in a relationship over here okay and so i'm going to leave it at that i hope the reading finds you well i hope that it has provided you know whatever answers that you are seeking for the month of march you seem to have a lot of questions and so i feel like the the overwhelming message is you know you got to rip off that band-aid you got to do it fast and you got to be very very deliberate and you have to be the one to initiate it okay um so uh scorpios best of luck with everything okay take care of yourself and for those of you who are looking for a uh reader uh if you need some spiritual advice or if you know someone who might need some spiritual advice i have a link in the description box below for a psychic she is based out of california her name is bridget and I highly recommend that you get a reading from her. And uh, I've included in the thumbnail, when you click on my videos, there is a uh, new image. And that is also from an artist. She's based out of California as well. If you'd like to look at her, um, what she has on her website, some art stuff, some things that you want to get for your house and things like that, her link is also in the description box below, okay? Best of luck with everything and I wish you well. Take care.